My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Monster Train. We've got a random clan, random clan, and covenant rank 10. Friendly units on the top floor enter with dazed. Ooh, it sounds like it's gonna be a rough time for us. That it does. Ooh, though we start with a guardian stone and two offering tokens here. Also two purifying cleansers. Don't really know how they're going to fit into the deck and the Seraph the Temperant is sapping. So we don't want to set ourselves up with only one floor and weak attacks unless we also have Purge. Although we can get Purge. We have Melting Remnant, so we have the ability to get uh, remove all debuffs from allies and remove all buffs from enemies, which would be great to have for the Seraph the Temperant fight upcoming at the very end. Uh, start a battle summon four random units from your deck on the middle floor. Interesting. So that sounds like a good idea, kind of, with the Guardian Stone in particular. Oh, uh, although because we're also Melting Remnant, we have these Waxy units in our deck, which will be summoned by the Sketches of Salvation, which actually make it significantly worse for us. Because we have to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight cards from this deck, rather than just the standard four in the Train Stewards if we want to start summoning things to the midline. So that would be just to get a bunch of incant triggers on the midline together, but one of them being the Guardian Stone makes me nervous because if it's out the front, it's gonna have a bad time. I think we'll take Mold Braces. Stygian is our lead. Yeah, I think we'll take Mold Braces. We'll use that to have these dregs fuel a, uh, a train steward in the front line. I don't love that pickup, but the other pickup actually seems like it would be actively negative for us right now. Sweep. Mm. Ultimately, we're going to want to go with the Conduit, but Sweep is very powerful very early. We might actually need the power it provides. Hang on, let's see. So the next area, we have a Stygian unit on the same side as a Merchant of Steel. That could actually be us getting much more powerful there. I'm going to take the Conduit here. And try and use that minion upgrade. Unit Draft. Ooh, that's really rough for us to do. Like, we're just going to take... Uh, probably like 16 damage. If we take this, at least. Right, you're doing 9. You're doing 7, 16. So wait, actually, it's 16 two times. So 32 damage total. As much as I want the unit draft, I have to take it. Ugh. If we had sweep, this would have been a lot better, but we don't, which is going to make this very difficult. Oh, gosh. I have to put you both here on the top floor just to get as much time to get those triggers off possible. Okay. Yeah, we're not even going to get the Apprentice of Light down. Although, to be fair, we did expect that, right? Let's set up a bottom floor ready. Okay. Drop the dead weight. Seven and nine. So if I put the dragon in front, I can actually get it to live. But if I put the dragon in front, then the... Hmm. We'll drop the train steward here, definitely. It's just the Apprentice of Light then gains damage shield, which gives them the ability to attack again. I don't like that. So do I lose the train steward here? Or take seven more damage? I think we lose the train steward. Guess I have to expand your life then. Uh, let's... Yeah, let's get another drag out there. Should have waited on that. Okay, 
extend your lifespan again. Get past the minions I can't do anything about. Yeah, two HP left on the Disciple Inquisitor. This was extremely, extremely rough to take. The reason I took it is because minion drafts right now... Oh my god, so much damage. 37. Yeah, 37 overall. Minion drafts to us right now... ...are incredible for getting more encant. Trick, come on! None of these are good! Ah. <sighs> oh. Encants and gain rage does mean that we will have a damage unit at least. I don't like it. But I'll take it, just in case that's all I find. Watch no steel. Multi-strike would actually make it reasonable, though. Titan Sentry is uh, Frostbite to all enemy units. So that gives us our sweep that we don't yet have. But then there's the Siren of the Sea. The Siren of the Sea grows very slowly, though, is a problem with it. I mean, the Titan Sentry doesn't even need to be on our encant floor. Let's take it. Give it a large stone. It just goes on the bottom floor. Yeah, the enemy's under with armor 10, sure. It's not going to be a problem. Well, okay, he didn't turn up on the bottom floor, which uh, means that he needs to be on the top floor, which means that I can't play both of these. Oh, gosh. And we don't have directed damage for the boss later. And we're going past both of our heels here. Oh, no. Well, life just got really bad for us. This is not, not what we wanted to see. I actually want the dregs to die to give armor to the Nameless Siren right now. So I know that this hand, I'm going to draw the Titan Sentry, which has to go on the top line. Everyone dies, right? It's totally fine there. It's just the fact that the boss is going to have a Conduit Infiltrator is really going to hurt us. Unless, of course, the Titan Sentry by themselves managed to take the boss out, which honestly uh, could happen. Not entirely unlikely. Mm-hmm. There's the Conduit Infiltrator. Next card in the deck is not the one we would want. Single chain steward behind you. And then double kill the cl eh, double kill the clergyman. So we actually deal some damage to the steel slate here. Right. And it all worked out in the end. No damage taken that fight. Alright. We also get a Titan's Tooth, which is good with the offerings you already have in the oh offering synergy we already have in the deck. Uh any of these. Probably not. Also probably not there as well. Very much looking for one encant floor and then something good to stand behind the the Titan Sentry on a different floor. Giving holdover to either of the offering tokens or possibly even either of the uh, offering targets would be really good here. Stygian unit could also be really good. Could get me something to put behind the Titans. Eh... Uh, no, probably not something to put behind the Titan Sentry, though. No, I'm going to go for the Hursle's Horde. Gain an artifact. Plus two stacks of Frostbite each time it's applied. All right. Well, we know what we're doing now. We're actually building around uh, the Titan Sentry. That's our biggest impact thing that we can do. So if I can remove the Incant Witch right now, I might actually do it. 
A rare Umbra, Awoken, or Hellhorn pick. Huh. Keeping our unit alive is the most important thing here. Awoken has a couple different ways of doing that. As well as some good spell synergy. Let's look at it. There's the spreading spores. That is what I was thinking of. It, like, it's not going to be gaming armor, so it might as well regen. And if it's going to regen, and it's got spikes, and it's got, like, the whole thing now is Titan Sentry, stack a bunch of spreading spores on it as quickly as I can. Win. Can I put my Incant Trigger on the same floor as that? I mean, they're not damage spells. When's our next spell upgrade? Oh. Oh, God. Yeah, the next Merchant of Magic is actually in three sections time. This is still going to be rough. We might want to take the energy here, actually just as, like, interim support for this build. Titan Sentry is a bad way to be doing the... Oh, hang on. Fine, I'll get rid of that. And then... Titan Titan. Just got to thin out the deck. Offering a Titan's Tooth so that I don't have to take damage to the Constructed Explosive there. Get another Dreg down, and a Guardian Stone on the top line, so that we can actually start defending. Okay. These Dregs dying and just giving 5 armor to the front enemy unit, like, is actually surprisingly important to us right now. I wish I had someone to put those Train Stewards. Simply do not. Okay. Well, we've almost pretty much got this. The... Frostbite built up in that area is going to be enough overall. There we go. <clears throat> Formless Child is a nice way to get back a unit, but I'd have to sacrifice a unit first. I don't know what unit I would want to sacrifice. I would also have to thin down the amount of units that I kill if I wanted to actually specifically get something back. The Siren Song is not a bad permafrost card here if we could get it. Well, three spells and enhance them with plus 20 magic power and zero cost. As well as consume. Uh, if that gets the Titan's Tooth and stuff like that out of my deck, the Titan's Tooth and the Crypt Builder, it's going to be rough. I don't think I take any of these here, which is always really rough to turn down a rare. Okay, okay. These make more sense to me. Apply one sap to enemy units as well as applying armor. But that's not my bottom line. Hmm. Maybe it's offering Monument just to try and set up the top line a bit better. Oh my god. Hang on. What if that is my bottom line? And it's Titan Sentry offering Monument Guardian Stone Tethys. And we do all of our casting on the bottom floor, cut the Nameless Siren so that we draw the Titan Sentry on the first turn every turn. So if we do that, we need the capacity. Unless, of course, we rely on the offering Monument removing itself at some point. 
right? One thing we definitely don't really need there, if we are doing that on that floor, is the energy. Extra draw is still nice. I'm going to go capacity because I want to be able to set them up like that, but then I also want to be able to transition out of it later. Oh, I could get another offering monument on this side, but I could also upgrade the offering monument I already have on this side as well as disclude two cards from the deck. Discluding two cards from the deck here is really handy. Multi-strike. Nameless Siren multi-strike. It's way too late for that. Wow. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm removing the idea of doing a second line here. Stacking all of my encantry is on the same floor, as well as my champion, which decreases the cost of other things. Uh, and then using spells to clear up on the top floors, if needed, is is uh, looks like the way we're going to be going with this. So I will re-roll here. In particular, looking for health for either of the stones. You can't gain one armor. Yeah, you need more armor. It's still the sweep. Sweep doesn't matter at all anymore. So we take the Conduit Tethys Titan Bane again. Force enemy units heal all health when we move a floor. That's really bad for us because we, we can kill Clipped Guardians. It's just we kill them over the course of a couple floors with the... Uh, decaying frostbite, uh, not decaying, the non-decaying frostbite on them, rather. Um, so, as much as I would love an opportunity for an extra relic here, because relics support this build very well, uh, that one's not going to be it. Dang. I did put the burnout on the offering totem, just because I assumed that uh, we'll yeah, get past that soon enough. One sec. Dreg goes on the top line. Dreg can't go on the top line. Okay, so we're going to have to put something else on the top line to kill that collector. Uh, Titan's Tooth can't be played on a different line. There we go. Okay, Lance Lance, save some energy on the Crypt Builder with the Offering Token, despite the fact that's like totally not necessary. Let's get a Dreg down there, but the Dreg is basically only there to die later. The sake of the encounter it can provide. I, I feel like I pretty accurately called my shot about how this one was going to go, and I'm feeling pretty good about that. Okay. Lock you to the very back. And then bring you back to the front. Got him. Working out exceedingly well. Uh, Mollusk Mage? We could fit that on the floor. It's plus seven magic power. It's just we don't... The spells we cast don't really benefit that much from magic power. Apply silence to enemy units. That sounds like a good idea, the silence to enemy units. Yeah. Yeah, I want that. Just in case. Uh, fourth floor. Is this too late for a subsuming blade? I don't think this is too late for a subsuming blade. Especially because it costs zero. So all I need to do is give that holdover. Or a holdover and a little bit of extra damage. Both would be really good. 
minion upgrades. Again, we'd just be looking for health on the Offering Monument and the Guardian Stone. Uh, so we're probably going for the artifacts over here. Incantability to trigger an additional time is pretty ridiculous here. No, we're not really going to want to get any of those Blights in the deck. Deck is already a bit overloaded at the moment. Speaking of the deck being overloaded, maybe it's time to purge our first... Uh, hang on. No, this next area has the first Merchant of Magic and Ages, as well as the ability to purge two cards. We'll be going to that. Obviously, we're looking for double stack or holdover on spreading spores. Normal enemies gain multi-strike. Multi-strike is actually good for us. It's actually very good for us. I save myself... Hang on. Do I save myself damage by having spikes here or lose damage by having spikes here? I think I lose... Like, I think I take a lot more damage by having the spikes here. So I think it's that, that, and then just play you out on a different floor. I get 40 stacks. Oh, good lord. I do want to cast as many spells as I can here on the bottom line. In fact, I have to. Okay, I'm going to be casting spells on the bottom line here, I think. Fine. Frozen Lance. Frozen Lance. Should put a train steward on a different line just to free up space in my hand. Frozen Lance. Then a Subsuming Blade will kill you so that I can offering token a... Crypt Builder. Great. I feel like that was all pretty essential setup right there. Everything else here is fine, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. Let's throw you two on the top floor. <sighs> I don't have a friendly unit to apply that burnout to anymore. Assuming Blade isn't even enough damage to take out the Clip Defender here. Not unless I... No, actually, I don't even have other... I don't even have other things that'll do that for us. Deal 8 damage. If it slays, it increases permanently. Fine. That's a slay! I really want the Unnamed Tome for the boss here. Yeah, because now I get to kill the sick of it in the back line without it actually getting its extinguish trigger and upgrading the damage of the Sower of Sorrows. Okay. There you go. But you have 55. Yeah. You have 55 frost on you, friend. This one's not going your way. In can't put frost on enemies would be great. I can't take the volatile gauge here. Like, I... Hmm, hang on. All of my... All of my damage spells cost negative two. So it just changes the cost of the spreading spore, basically, because all of the rest of them, worst they can roll is be one cost for us. But almost always they will be zero cost. But it's also three extra draw a turn, which is a lot. I think I can do this. Oh my god, we did get the glacial seal. Oh my god. Resin removal as well! 
So resin removal is the way we're going to fix ourselves against the uh, against the final fight. Giving that hold over or permafrost would be really appealing to me right now. We don't have a lot of money, but we do have the Merchant of Magic. There's a lot of stuff I want to upgrade here. Hold over negative one cost on spreading spores is actually one of the largest. Negative one cost will override the volatile gauge. Do I need to upgrade the damage of the Subsuming Blade there? It's growing. It's growing at its own rate. I, yeah, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. Oh, okay. I mean, Petty Theft is another damage spell for us to cast. It's undirected as well, which we don't have that much undirected. We just have the Subsuming Blade. I'll take it, and I'll probably give it the damage upgrade. Okay, plus 10 magic power to the Petty Theft. Might be a bit late for Petty Theft, but whatever. Uh, all of these train stewards are still really annoying, and they're chunking up the first cycle. The Purifying Cleansers, at least, we have targets that we put them on occasionally as extra spells to cast, but they'll also want to be removed at a relatively soon kind of time. All right. All right, Phil, let's go. Phil's given all of her units armor shield, uh, sorry, uh, spell shields, which thankfully affects half of my deck, but not the other half. Mm. Our minions costing a decent amount to put down in the first cycle here is also something that's uh, a little intimidating. Okay. Oh, there's our first spreading spores. Great. Uh, yeah, we're going zeros after that, so we'll go Glacial Seal. Spreading spores. Petty theft to kill a backliner. On um, oh, actually, hang on. We'll put the drag on this line, and then we'll kill it. Giving armor to the front unit and triggering our encants again. We should have put Purifying Cleanse on that before we killed it, though. That's my bad. The units that get biased are getting biased to go die elsewhere at the moment. So, as you can see here, the Clipped Reflector is going to move up a floor, move up a floor, and die. Okay, that'll do. So we'll probably go energy after this boss. Helps us with the slight volatility of the volatile gauge. Not that it's extremely volatile for us right now. We've demonstrated a couple times here. That'll do. Drawing more of these spreading spores more quickly here is, I think, key. <clears throat> key to our success. Also, when you get to pick rares from outside of your own class, Spreading Spores is usually a good one because it is uh, oftentimes a dawn into its own day. It provides all you really need to do that build. Which can be both good and bad. Here, at the very least, it's also doing a bunch of incant triggering. Uh, so it's not the only thing happening in this build, so I don't feel too bad about it, but... 
It, it does feel like maybe the card might get nerfed. It, it's been nerfed a couple times and it might get nerfed again. I wouldn't be surprised to see it at least. I also don't know how you would nerf it without making it completely useless. So I am worried about that. Okay. Hello. I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna subsuming blade my own statue there. Just to keep incrementing it. Great. Harness the Titan, enhance all spells in hand with plus five magic power. We don't actually have that many spells that use the magic power. Yeah, the spreading spores eventually take up that whole position. Yeah, I'm actually fine without either of these. Any of them, rather. Uh, definitely the extra energy right now. Specifically, that's mostly important in setting up our units at the start. Hmm... Dupe. Dupe another spreading spores, get it to go off much more quickly. Hmm. Seems like the best way to get powerful here, to be honest. Also, not to underestimate the option of removal here. Uh, let's get some dregs out. And then, actually, I feel like I'm without dregs. I'm going to add a dreg back in. Kidding. Uh, I think it is another spreading spores. And then, then all damage spells are free, regardless. Almost enemy units gain eight damage. Oof. I'll admit, I worry about that a little. I think we'll have enough time to get online that that's not going to be a problem. But I do worry about that a little. We might set up on the second floor, really, depending on our opening draw here. Well, we have to set up on your second floor now. See, I can't draw past the thing that I won't be able to cast here. Petty theft is three, so I wouldn't even able to. Okay. I can't even deal it. I have to deal it to an enemy unit. There's the Titan Sentry. Okay. Unfortunately, I am only going to get one of the spreading spores held over for the next turn, but so be it. Okay, let's kill the crypt builder. Save myself a lot of damage there. The second spreading spores off, but this time on a correct target. Offering. Yeah, I'm going to drop that unnamed tome. Get another spreading spores. Great. Okay, I feel pretty comfortable that we've now set ourselves up in the, in the correct holding pattern. Although it feels like these aren't going to get damaged enough. Use the subsuming blade for just extra damage on the back line there, maybe. Mm, 
purifying cleanses. This is a really garbage hand for us. Because garbage, 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 garbage. And then the offer two were, you know, spreading spores, obviously. I fear I may take some damage here. As into my my pyre. Uh, will I? Yeah, I will. 42. So if I damage you, the Gilded Wing in the back line, that is, I can actually save myself some here. Actually, if I go Titan's Tooth... No, Titan's Tooth won't do it. Let's do the obvious things, at least. At the very least, we managed to make sure the Gilded Wing only takes one hit. Or rather, only deals one hit. Mm-hmm. This is something I was worried about. Is the enemy's damage is overwhelming. On that floor. Thankfully, we had spells to help us out there. But the more I cast these spreading spores, the more spreading spores I'm going to get. Yeah. Oh, gosh. At the very least, we are getting, you know, what? Four armor every time we cast a spell. So it is working out for us. But you can see here that we almost got overwhelmed. Almost. I'm going to silence all of you. Just keep getting all my encant triggers. Great. Top line is dead. Get another encant trigger. <sighs> okay, well. If there's ever a fight I was built for... The enemy that does very little damage, but grows stronger every time it gets damaged itself, but cannot do that because it got silenced, is it. Guardian Stone's really good, but I don't, don't have the space for it. Unless I want to drop the Glacial Seal. I don't think I can, though. Kill a random enemy, uh, sorry, kill a random friendly unit to kill a random non-boss enemy unit actually is really good because it'll just kill stragglers. Because we set up on bottom floors anyway. Or rather, bottom two floors. I'll take a crushing demise. We'll see. It might come in handy. The only thing is, like, eventually, obviously, we are playing spreading spores the deck. So we have to do worry uh, a little about that. Okay. I think we might go this side just for the removals, actually. Get the dregs out of here. Merchant of Trinkets has... Whenever you play your third spell, turn all cards gain plus one magic power for the rest of the battle. Eh. I mean, our magic power isn't really anything to us. The more, like, just casting another spell would be way better because it's the incant triggers that are a thing to us. Uh, Sigiled Seaweed is not bad. Take that and re-roll. When we play a unit, Ren content and just reduces zero cost for the turn, or whenever you summon your second unit, gain three energy. Uh, so we only really need to worry about the extra energy as we're setting up. And as we're setting up, I mean, Flicker's Liquor is only available while we're setting up as well. Uh, but as we're setting up on the first turn, Hell's Banners means that I can play Tethys and whatever I draw and still have three energy left over. It's really good there. 
I don't know if any of the rest of those matter to us even slightly. Plus 25 health. So Seraph the Temperant is, or rather shouldn't have, any sweepers. I'm pretty sure. But just in case... Ooh, Endless on Offering Monument. Let's talk about Endless on Offering Monument for a moment, right? Because it sounds like a really clever idea. So in the same way that buffs, that is say, uh, to say rather enhancements, persist after you bring a Endless unit back, or if you reform them, so too did debuffs. And the Offering Monument doesn't lose 5 health, it loses 5 max health. So if you bring it back after reforming it or with Endless, it will have... I can't remember what the stat line is, but I had this uh, I had this confirmed for me in a stream. Either 0, zero or zero, 01. So that is not the ultra combo it looks like it could possibly have been. Let's get both Purifying Cleansers out of here. They've been dead weight for a while. Okay. Feeling pretty good about this. Biggest thing is going to be setting up on floor one or floor two. Uh, from the bottom, one or two, right? And that's really just going to depend on what we draw here in the opener. Obviously, we'd love to set up on the top floor, but we can't afford to. Worst case scenario, the Offering Monument might be able to protect me here. That one's free. I don't want the gold as much as I want the increase in damage for the Subsuming Blade, but at the same rate, I want as much damage as possible to go against the Darkwing in the front line. Okay. Those offering, those spreading spores are so ready for, uh, so ready for whenever I draw the, wherever I draw the right unit, rather. Oh God, please. Game. One, two, three, four. Sorry, I can play another one. There we go. That's why I haven't played the Guardian Stone yet as well. Great. Guardian Stone down, Spreading Spores begin. We still need to like over Wombo Combo these turns. Just for the sake of getting up armor. Also got a Titan Soothe, so I should probably cast that first. Alright, both spreading spores as well. Now, every second turn, the Seraph is going to come down here and do that again. And then on those turns, I'm just stacking a bunch of... Uh, a bunch more Frostbite on the Seraph. That could end up killing before the end phase. Any of these that cost us energy, I'm probably just not going to play the, like, spreading spores there. I'll discard this one. Mm, okay. These only cost one energy. If they cost two energy, I won't play them. Or if they cost three energy, I obviously won't play them. Actually, they can't cost three energy. Because I already gave them a, a cost reduction. Okay. Yeah, the Encant stack floor is very much where you oftentimes want to go with the Stygian Guard. I think this is a perfect example of why.
So here's what I was talking about, about killing stragglers with the crushing demise. I thought the stragglers would probably be stronger, but we did have a really, really absurdly good setup. So I'm not entirely surprised by it. Okay. So I'm trying not to just cast every single spreading spores. Obviously here energy is uh, dictating that we can't. But it will help us prevent, you know, later on drawing hands that are only spreading spores. But also, that's pretty much going to happen at this point, because that's our deck. Okay, and to get... Oh. Yeah, that Seraph is having a rough time. Also, an interesting benefit to this that I didn't expect is I thought I was going to have to throw, like, Subsuming Blades and Frozen Lances away on different lines consistently. Not the case. The Seraph, because I only have one floor, is taking the turns to, you know, put Sap on this floor and a Light Wings and then leave. And then on the next turn, comes down, saps this floor and puts down a Light Wings again. So the extra Light Wings are uh, concealed to this wall. Consigned to this floor is what I was trying to say. Concealed to this floor. Ryan. Ryan. Come on. Uh, sure. Get those spreading spores out. This is going to be... I'm pretty... Pretty comfortable saying this is going to be our Covenant 10 win right now. Yeah. Yeah. Not really too much more we can do here. Other than make it extremely clear that this one was always mine and never the Seraphs. Alright, Seraph. So, was the unit draft at the very start of the fight where I got this? No, that's where I got the... Oh, my God. So, the biggest amount of damage we took was in the, the challenge we took at the very start to try and find an encant unit. We found an encant unit, then we cut it, and then the unit that we got in the second area became the unit that we ran with for the majority of the game. Getting a very early uh, cuddle beard made that so much more successful because it meant that every time we did, you know, the... An example would be Titan Sentry uh, got attacked or the other monument as well, the Frostbite monument, it, it made those so much more powerful, like a, like twice as powerful, almost twice for the Titan Sentry, twice for the other one, uh, which is, oh, Merchant Rerolls cost 20% more. That had to happen, to be fair. And Petty Theft got a Gold Mortar. Neat. Hey, we applied more Frostbite than we've ever done before. That surprises me a little. But yes, that's good. That's, uh, that's our first uh, Covenant 10 win right there. In the next episode, we'll be going for Covenant 11. For the moment, though, my name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train. I am streaming this game pretty much every single day for four hours. Uh, you can find the links and times for that in the description down below. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourself, and hopefully we'll see you next time.